Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about fill overlay, something so simple but so many neat tricks you can do with it. Let's jump right into it. Overlays, something so simple but I'm sure some of you don't know this. If you select any element, you can just add a fill to create an overlay. So you don't need to add, for example, a rectangle. Maybe you want to do this and then you set it to 20%. You don't need to do that. You can just select any element and add an additional fill. What that does is by default, it will add a black fill at 20% transparency. You can make it lighter, obviously, by making it white. The problem with this is there's limitations with styles. What does that mean is if you add a style, this light or dark overlay is part of that style. So you can't manually adjust the darkness or lightness of the overlay, which can be annoying. Another thing you can do is you can copy and paste fills from different objects. So this might be a neat trick that you don't know. Let's, let's say we have two objects here and we have one that's red. Let's say we had two images here. I'm just indicating them with two different rectangles. So let's say I've added my dark overlay here and I've adjusted it to be 16%. And for some reason I've picked, um, you know, get interesting color. And I actually want to copy that fill. The way that you do that is you select this tiny little section next to this rectangle and go just command C and then in your second element, command V and you actually paste that individual property. You can do the same thing with underlays. So you just move the fill to the bottom. So you might have a image with a transparent background or you can use a background remover. So I'm going to click on this image. And I've just been playing around with these plugins um, to remove backgrounds, but most of them are like you get free, free 10 trials and then afterwards you get to pay. So um, feel free to find one. I haven't found a free one that's really good. You might, might be better to just do it in browser or if you have a transparent image already. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So I have one set up already. The way that you do that is you can press this plus button. So let's say I wanted a red background and the way that you do that it's the same way as copying and pasting fills you can just select it and drag it down to reorder it so for some reason you have to select it away from these fields because if i try to drag it here it doesn't work so i can do it from here as well this is not specific to fills but i thought this was kind of interesting to explain but we have transparency shortcut here so let's say i've drawn a rectangle and I want to change the opacity. So the number is by default able to control the transparency. So if I press five, it changes the layer to 50% and then one 10%. And then if I press zero, it should go back to 100%. You can also see the indicator here. And the way that we can turn that on and off is go by going Figma preferences, use number keys for opacity. So by default, that should be on. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because it actually changes the transparency of the layer and not the fill. And you might be thinking, okay, they're pretty much the same thing. I can pretty much change either one, but not necessarily. Let's say I have the fill at 50% and then someone goes ahead and presses zero because they're like, oh, if I press zero, it should jump back to 100%. So I press zero and it goes 100%, but actually doesn't affect the fill number. So that's something to keep in mind of. So why is this important? I just want to show some key differences from changing the fill opacity versus the layer opacity. So the key difference, just looking at this image, which is pretty much the same as here. So we have the layer and the fill is in the fill. You can add multiple fills. So as you can see, if I add a fill, there are two transparency numbers I can change. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. So how you understand layer and fill is in most instances they pretty much do as you expect them to so what layer does is a layer transparency just changes everything in that layer so the whole element whereas obviously the fill only changes the fill opacity and transparency as i mentioned before changing the opacity through the number shortcut only affects the layer number which is at most of the time what we want it to do uh, and also it affects the effects property. So I will show you the background blur technique and why you need to change one transparency and not the other. 
So I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain the difference between fill and layer through this element. So you can see, let me try to bring it up. So currently we have this element. It is a gray box with a pink stroke and a purple drop shadow. So this drop shadow also has an opacity of 100%. If I was to change the fill by 50%, you can see as expected, only the fill changes, the stroke and the, um, the effect has the same opacity. So let me just bring that back to 100. But then if I go and press five, which affects the layer transparency, you can see how everything is now transparent. So why is that important? I will show you um, how it affects the background blur. Background blurs were made famous using the glass pneumorphism trend. If you've never seen it, um, I took a screenshot from Google. Essentially what people do is they have these nice gradients or these crazy gradients of colors or could be images. And then they have a white rectangle or frame where they blur out sections of that image or gradient to create this nice effect. So I'm going to scroll down and look at these two examples. So these two examples both have the background blur turned on. However, I swapped the transparency of the layer and fill. So in the first instance, we have 50% for the layer fill 100%. And the second one, we have the layer at 100% and the fill at 50%. So here is one example where understanding the difference between layer and fill transparency is quite useful because with background blur, we want the background blur to be functioning at max capacity. What, the, what does this mean? It means that, as I explained before, when you affect the layer transparency, it affects everything underneath. So it affects the fill, it affects the stroke, it affects the effects. So we essentially need the blur to be working at maximum functionality, which means we've got to keep this at 100%. But we need it to be transparent, otherwise you won't see it. So as an example, if this was at 100%, it's essentially just a white rectangle. So we actually need to drop the transparency only of the fill because we want the background blur to work. So again, if I was to swap it, you can see I've affected the transparency, but I've also affected the functionality of this blur. So it's kind of turned off in that instance. Opacity of layers and fills is also a very interesting thing to understand when elements are in groups. And I'll demonstrate this down below. So we have three phone images and I've just broken it up with this purple rectangle. So if we select all the elements and change each layer to 50%, you can see how every element is transparent now. So you can see the phone of each photo and you can see the full extent of this purple rectangle. So I'm just going to go undo by selecting all and hitting zero to go back to 100%. And now I want to group it and we'll see what happens. So now that we've grouped it, the layer property also assumes that this is now one element. So if I was to press five, you can see I can no longer see the extents of this phone. So essentially this picture is cropped, but it is transparent. I can demonstrate it with this rectangle, which I've sent to the back. You can see, I can always see this rectangle, which indicates that these images are transparent. So the way to get around this is every time you have a group, you want to make sure if you want things to be transparent you select each individual element and i can make it 50 percent something to note also is if an element is at 50 percent and then you make the overall group 50 percent that element now becomes doubly affected so it's 50 percent by itself and then 50 percent in a group which means it is at 25 percent transparency the last thing i want to talk about is pass through versus normal properties, which is really important if you are using a lot of the blending properties for your pictures and elements. So I'm gonna scroll down, what does this mean? So every time you build something by default, let's say I wanna build a frame, by default, the layer setting is set to pass through. And if I was to press normal, nothing really happens. So let's say it's on 50%, normal, pass through, it pretty much feels like it does the same thing. 
And you might be thinking, okay, this is a bit different to the fill. I can't really control that, but you actually can. The way that you do that is you can go fill and then in this teardrop, which is the same icon here, you can control the same settings, but only for that particular fill. So if you have multiple fills, you can have them at different settings. And this is kind of like the overall overriding um, property that you want to set for that. So let me just delete this frame. So this blue square, I'm going to set it to multiply. So currently you can see it's affecting all the layers underneath. And this is where pass through and normal kind of is controlled. So I'm going to group these two elements together. So I'm going to group the selection, right? And essentially nothing has really changed. Like it's still doing the same effect as before. And that is because the pass through property is set on. So essentially what that means is you want your elements with blending properties. So this is what I mean by blending properties. So any, any one of these. So I want my elements with blending properties to still affect everything in my artboard. So that's why it's still affecting this image. However, if we set it to normal, what actually happens is you're telling Figma, no, I actually want my blending elements to only affect the things in the group it's in. So if I was to go layer and go normal, you can see how this square is affecting this image, but it's no longer affecting this image or the background color, which is gray, which is why this kind of feel looked like it's changed color. So if I was to go back, let me just go off this. So it's actually also blending into this gray background color. So if I was to have a white background, I hit center back, you can see that's kind of the color it's changing to. Go normal, it's all become that color. So that's the way that you understand pass through normal. So normal again is you're containing the blend property within the group. And if you go pass through, it just pretends like it's not in a group and it just affects everything as per usual. I know that was a lot to go through, but hopefully you've learned something new about fill and its properties. That's all for now. Stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.